Now that we know how changes in the general price level affect different components of aggregate expenditure, we are ready to derive a new curve in macroeconomics, a curve known as aggregate demand. The aggregate demand curve shows what happens to equilibrium GDP as the price level changes. Now notice that we've put Y star on the horizontal axis, indicating equilibrium GDP, and P standing for the price level on the vertical axis. So this P stands for the price level, not for purchases. Now we've said that along any aggregate expenditure line, prices are held fixed. So this original aggregate expenditure line has some fixed price level, and we can indicate that fixed price level on our vertical axis that measures the price level. So let's label that as P. At that original price level, we have this aggregate expenditure line indicating that equilibrium GDP is going to happen at this level. So now we have one point on our aggregate demand curve, the point that tells us that at this price level, equilibrium GDP is this quantity. Now suppose that the price level increases. We've seen that when the price level increases, consumption falls, investment falls, and exports fall. So each of those components of aggregate expenditure fall. Government purchases are exogenous to our model. They're determined outside of the model, so we'll simply hold it fixed. This means that these decreases in components of aggregate expenditure add up to a decrease in aggregate expenditure. In other words, the whole aggregate expenditure line shifts down, and we get a new aggregate expenditure curve, like this. That new aggregate expenditure curve intersects our 45-degree line that contains the potential equilibrium points, where real GDP is equal to purchases, at a lower level of GDP. So equilibrium GDP falls as the price level increases. So at the new higher price level, which we'll indicate as P prime, we get this new lower level of equilibrium GDP, and we have a second point on our aggregate demand curve. Or suppose that the price level falls from the original blue prices. When the price level falls, consumption increases, investment increases, net exports increase. So each of those components of aggregate expenditure increase and will hold government purchases constant since they're exogenous to our model. Well, this means that aggregate expenditures rise, and that means the whole aggregate expenditure line shifts up. As it shifts up, we get a new intersection with the 45 degree line at a higher level of GDP. So at this lower price level, let's call it P double prime, we see that equilibrium GDP increases. So we have yet a third point on our aggregate demand curve. We can connect these and we get a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. Now that sure looks a lot like the demand curves we drew in microeconomics. We have a P indicating prices on the vertical axis and we're measuring some quantity of output on the horizontal axis. But in microeconomics, the price on the vertical axis was the price of a single good, and the quantity on the horizontal axis was the quantity of that good. The demand curves in micro showed how consumers change the quantity they demanded as price changes. It doesn't show what happens to equilibrium quantity, it simply shows what happens to the quantity demanded as price changes. Here, this doesn't stand for a single price, it stands for the general price level in the economy. And the curve shows us what happens to equilibrium GDP as we move along that curve, as prices change. In microeconomics, the primary reason for the demand curve to slope down was what we call the substitution effect. When the price of a good goes up, then the relative price of other goods is falling. So consumers are going to substitute away from the good that's become relatively more expensive and towards goods that have become relatively cheaper. We don't have any 
substitution effect like that in an aggregate demand curve. Because this is the general price level and we're assuming that all prices are moving together by the same percentage. So there are no substitution effects built into this curve. In micro, we also had an income effect. As the price increased, your income meant less, and that was part of the reason the quantity demand had changed. We do have something like that in the aggregate demand curve in the form of the wealth effect. But that's really the only similarity in the sense of these effects and their relationship to the demand curves. But the most important thing to keep in mind is that the aggregate demand curve measures an equilibrium quantity as the price level changes. Now, even though aggregate demand curves are different from demand curves for individual goods, there is something that we can learn from what we learned about demand curves in microeconomics and apply to aggregate demand curves. In microeconomics, we said that if the price changes, we'll move along the demand curve. But if anything else changes, the demand curve will shift. The same thing is going to be true for an aggregate demand curve. The only thing that can cause you to move along the aggregate demand curve is a change of what appears on the vertical axis, a change in the price level. Anything else that changes in the economy will shift the aggregate demand curve. Think, for example, about a change in government purchases. We've taken that to be exogenous. But if government purchases suddenly increase, that'll shift aggregate expenditures at any given price level. And that'll cause a shift in the aggregate demand curve. Or you could think of other changes, like an increase in immigration that boosts the population. So we can think of an increase or a change in government purchases. We can think about a change in population due to perhaps immigration. Or we can think about a change in policy that makes investments more or less attractive. So some kind of change in policy, perhaps tax policy, towards investment that affects investment. Or we could think about changes in other parts of the world. Changes in other economies that might affect exports or imports. All of these are changes that are not changes in the price level. They're changes other than a change in what appears on the vertical axis. So rather than having us move along the aggregate demand curve, they will cause that aggregate demand curve to shift. So before we get together in class next time, I'd like you to think a little bit about what these kinds of changes are going to do to the aggregate demand curve. Which way is the aggregate demand curve going to shift, depending on what kind of change we're looking at? So think about that a little bit before we get together in class.